142 Lennox Ave, Crime Square. Shout out to Dunbar. Shout out Espinal. Shout out Drew Han. Shout out St. Nick. Shout out Polar Grounds. I, I'm, I mean, I'm with that quote. The, the old hall. Check one, check one. It's your boy Mike Powers Global. We still here. Locked in. We got a Bronx representative in the building today. Some of y'all know him, some of y'all might not. Check this out. If you were day one, appreciate you coming back. Yes. And if you and brand new to the channel, stick around, because we talk that talk over here. Zah. Man, it's been a minute, bro. So first of all, let me get into something real quick, if you don't mind. Indulge me. Indulge me. So uh, some time ago, by the time this video dropped, I put this statement out about 38 Special. Wait a minute. Hold up. Did you see what I was putting about 38 Special? Did you see that? Uh, yeah. What's okay. Up? All right. So look, it caused a lot of people to have conversations, right? Like, because mm -hmm. I, I said I, I jumped out the window. And I did compare. I need to explain this. I don't really like explaining, but I compared this. I put him in the same category as a prince, a little Richard. Yeah, you was wild. You was, you was too hot. Now... Wild. Let me explain why. I'm not listen, a guy like Lil Richard invented rock and roll, right? Michael Jackson, thriller album. You know what I mean? His whole 50 year career, whatnot. Prince mastered 27 instruments by the time he was 15 years old. Legendary sing, dance, production, curation, the whole fashion, everything, right? So it's like, why would he do that? Why would he compare? And I say this because I'm certainly prepared to stand on it that it has to do with the consistency, the consistency of the high level of achievement we talking about when we're talking about bars. This man got away with words. He knows how to turn a phrase. You hear? This is the essence of hip hop, first of all, is when you say something that I didn't expect you to say, I can't see it coming, and then you smack me with it, and I go, oh, my God, I can't believe he did that. Spesh does that time and 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 time again. So I uh, see, you know, let me just say this. I, let, me, let me just say this. Based on his mastery, because it's like, you know, certain cats is like doing 140 million views or they doing these big world tours of stadiums and we're like because you know you got to be on some fuckery if i could say in order to kind of be at that level a lot of times right so special gonna get it how you live sitting currently damn near towards the top of this underground resurgence as i like to call it and i feel like we just need to acknowledge that greatness and not put it over in the corner of underground lyricism. Let's give him the due that he would be getting if he had been doing this starting in 1988, right? Because you give Rakim those kind of props, but this guy's run is ridiculous. And a lot of cats not messing with him on words. Now you could tell me why I'm bucking. Uh, you know, we when you say stuff like that, well, the 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 direction of uh speaking on Little Richard, Prince, Michael Jackson, they greatness, and then you know making that symbiotic with what Special is doing, and he'll probably tell you like, "Yo, bro, calm down." Now I'm saying, like, you feel me? But the enthusiasm. And the admiration for his bars that I see you give him, that's respect. Nobody can, nobody, I can't tell you, you don't feel how you feel. So I, I salute you for that. But we got to, we got to sometimes come down to reality, my God. Like, like it was a time that I thought Killer Priest was the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I'm saying? And I hold that dear. You know what I'm saying? But it's a lot of achievements, a lot of heights, a lot of accolades that come with saying these. I guess these terms we could say even one is the goat, like greatest of all time. Like it's it at this point, bro. The goat title really is is 
paper thin at this point because of how so many people claim it. You know what I'm saying? Before you really had to, a person would have watched what they said around the time DMX, Jay Z, Ja Rule, Nas, all these niggas was gunning. Nigga wouldn't have said, yo, I'm the greatest of all time. You rarely heard a rapper say that. Rarely. Only, exactly. only, only a person that, mm, LL, <laughs> you feel me? It takes a lot more than being a bar smith or a master of the pen because it's a craft, right? So, boom, I could say this. Special is definitely in the underground top five. Top five, hands down. But everybody has their perspective. I could say, yo, damn, I want to see more of Special getting the same reaction, the same projection off of his singles with just him on it that he gets from when he get on a track with Benny or when he get on a track with, you know what I mean? Conway or a ransom, the projection then is massive. But when he does it, it seemingly just me being an observer, no hater. I super love Spesh, bro. This is just, you know, rap analytic talk. The projection ain't the same when he dropped Dolo. It feel like it's a lot, a lot of people that don't want to gravitate to it because he by himself, but they really love it when he features these big names. And it kind of seems to be a niche special. Like, you feel me? Like, yo, nigga, I, I'll but go. Here's the scary part, right? Mm -hmm. But he's also a CEO, too. He's not really just a rapper. So it does change the dynamic. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think that he's made his reasonable doubt yet. That shit with him and, and uh, what put me on the special was the album with him and Cool G Rap. That's what made me. Uh, I didn't never. I never heard a 38 special before that. But I heard that, I listened to every song, every day, all day, until I got tired of the fucking album, bro. Because I love G-Rap. It was so, again, it was so crazy that I, I'm hearing G-Rap on some up-to-date sound and nuances, and then you got 38 Special with him. You feel me? So that's kind of his niche. And I mean to get these big features or get these grandiose features. So I would like to see what he what he do when he say like fuck everybody. I think he might be in that bag right now. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he did his reasonable doubt yet. And I just think that when we see that happening, because we want to move on to the next subject real quick, because this is my fault, because I'm long winded. My apologies. But I just think that when we see that moment happen, and it's all about up here, and it's all about the vibe, right? Mm -hmm. That he got the skills to do it. Let me just say this. I stand on what I said, and Spesh might say, calm down. I'm not calming down. I stand on what I said. You got a song on the album, Omnipotent. It's called Weirdos. Like you got a spare nose vibes. Got an airy tone, man. I just know they weirdos. All prison calls connected to my spare phone. Looking for air time, and I'm looking at air domes. Weirdo, 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 weirdo. That shit away from me. That's the only white girl that I hate to see naked unless she making some cake for me. I got orders for plates, and I'm never late to eat. Y'all be in y'all rap saying shit, but ain't safe to speak. You seem like, and I swear to God, if I'm reading your Instagram, I feel like you have a disgust for this game. What's am I missing something? <laughs> Yeah, I do. You, you hit it right. I ain't going to hold it. I mean, I ain't going to hold you. I ain't going to sit here in front because I ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? I don't be fucking with these niggas, bro. I don't really like the system and who's the governors or who's the guardians of uh, the ebb and flow of creativity and how, how successful one can be. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of fuckery going on, especially I feel against personally the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? And I don't really see how it's being warranted, being that we the mecca of this shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's just my standpoint. Until we get that respect, until we get that embrace, and I mean that I feel the the existential parties is getting for for our sound. You know what I'm saying? Shit that we created. And I feel like, you know. Until we get that, I'm going to have that chip on my shoulder. I'm going to be trying to burn niggas on every record. And, you know, I say this a lot, but I stand on it. I stand on it. 
Let me wait till the seven, seven, seven drop. You I'm think that the Bronx don't get the respect that they deserve? Nah, hell no. Hell no. Niggas be trying to play the Bronx like like the Bronx is suckers because KRS one was attached to Africa band body. He don't really want to disrespect the old head like that. Nigga, I'm from I'm from uptown. And I'm saying the valley right around the corner. Niggas know my body over there. Bro, nobody give a fuck about Africa band body, bro. We, I'm talking real shit. I'm not talking hip hop politics shit. We talking street grown man to man. Nobody, he ain't got no strong say so in the fucking Bronx, man. And I think these bubbles of grandiose and per- perceptions over certain people need to be popped so we could stop being responsible for whatever they do. You know what I'm saying? That nigga's a man. I mean, he would have did what he did in the Bronx if he lived in Idaho, because it's, it's his psychology. Right. Now, we talk about, we talk about Bambada now. We talk about the accusations of him. That's doing, just one, I gotta, one thing. Yeah, that's I gotta one be, thing. I, I got to be careful. I got to be careful, right? Because legalities are involved for me, right? But we're talking about some allegations that was made about Africa Bambada and some nefarious behavior he may have had with some young men. I know niggas personally it happened to, bro. Personally, so can't no OG rapper say, yo, it's a myth or you're lying. You nigga, I'm from the Northeast Bronx, bro. I'm not from there actually. I moved there. I was up there for a long time. So you could say that's my hood now. You know what I'm saying? I'm from Harlem, but everybody knows Boston Road, Corsa, uh, the Valley, East Chester Road. That's that's the I mean stomping grounds for them niggas, as well as Bronx River. You know what I'm saying? But I know niggas personally, he did that shit too. I mean, they grown men now. These niggas is grown men now. You know what I'm saying? And it is what it is, but we don't got enough. The the the, the niggas who've been coming out the Bronx from 2000 on, we ain't got nothing to do with that, bro. You know what I mean? We, we official. We get money just like everybody else. We struggle like everybody else. And niggas going to stop, not me trying to put them bad jackets on us. You know what I'm saying? This niggas that did sucker shit in every hood. You know what I'm saying? That's just um, I have to say that it's a disclaimer because I have not done my research on on these allegations. Um, I don't know the people, the participants, or nor the backstory. So I'm going to lean on the word allegedly on this one because I just don't have the knowledge on it. I just got to be careful. But, yes, I do hear people saying the kind of thing that you're saying right now. And I've heard this for some time. It's not something that's not been on the internet. So, um, yeah. so I mean, I don't need no deals from them niggas. So I'm gonna say what I want to say, bro. Her, and then we talking about the song "Weirdos." What mm-hmm. made you? What What was on your mind when you made that song? Because that's why I crafted the question. Like you seemed like you disgusted with the game, and now we got a song called "Weirdos." On the omnipotent album, what made you do that song? Okay, usage, bro. That's what? that's what that's what was all about my my nigga. Cocaine usage, my nigga, and the fact that how that shit is running rampant in hip hop, and I feel that shit destroyed this culture, bro. I feel like that shit really destroyed the minds of the people using this this platform with this power, and now they're using it in a perverted or a a, a, a wrong manner because. Is built on addiction and sensory from when they being addicted, so they ain't even measuring what they saying or the shock value or or the depth of, of how that shit could change somebody's life. So if a nigga in, on a rap record talking about yeah, this coke music, and I mean sniff coke to it, you know I'm I'm next to the coke. Get the fuck out, bro. We we trying to we trying to get away from that, my guy. Like you, it's it ain't even like that's our culture no more. Because if you come to the hood. Where I'm at, niggas ain't outside pumping crack, bro. Nobody is outside pumping crack, bro. Everybody is pumping za. Everybody has weed, bro. Weed is moving like crack. It's like $20 for a gram. So you catching a felony for no reason. Nigga, nigga, we from the era, this shit went up to 50. How you making money? And this shit, 20 a gram, you got to really, really have it. You can't be nickel and diamond, put it like that no more, and think you're going to eat. So the whole culture of that is dead. Why these niggas keep keeping this shit alive, bro? Fuck them niggas. And not for nothing, a lot of them niggas wasn't getting no money before rap check. So how was y'all cocaine sellers? You listen to niggas' life stories and shit, it don't... 
it don't really be measuring up, bro. It don't you made the song. Up, you made the song weirdos because of cocaine usage in in the in the indie hip hop culture. If you listen to the song weirdos, type to get flout SSI shared clothes. Chip, what it said, chip off the bar. What it said, oh, damn, that shit was wild. Old weirdos type to get flour, vest that size, share clothes, sniff off the bar, chip off a square. Oh, these niggas is by the bar sniffing like they got a spare nose. This is the, the hook. If you listen to the hook, not just the, the bars, the hook is talking about niggas that sniff coke in the music industry. You know what I'm saying? Niggas that's using that effect to hype up who they really are. Then when you meet them in person, these motherfuckers is really dunce. They don't really got that type of energy. And then you see, oh shit, these niggas is, this is the culture. You know what I'm saying? So that's that was my premise on making that. Because this was my inception into the motherfucking uh, underground indie world. And I felt it was a cheat. You know what I mean? Because I deal with anxiety and all type of shit. So if you could just sniff some coke and get on stage and go crazy and tear it down and niggas love you and niggas is not respecting the fact that I don't sniff coke and I smoke weed, I might have to deal with my my shit for real, face to face without no additives and, and drug help. And I just looked at that with a little disdain. Like, man, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't real. That's not really them. That shit is cocaine talking. I mean, that's that's what I'm talking about. Um, you do you have you have a song called Prevail? Is that correct? Yeah, my son Scumbag on the uh, on the beat word. Scumbag Daytona. No, uh, Scumbag Digs. Got you. Now, so you promoted it, and on the caption for the promo, because you posted on IG. You got a picture there. You take a look at this picture. Um, and the caption says you was raised by some cats in the black spades, essentially. Um, can you talk to me about that picture and talk to me about your connection to those guys in the black spades? Oh, all right. So uh if that that might have been the, the game picture. Right. For me, that's um but that wasn't no black spades shit, of course. That's that was some uh some blood, New York blood shit. Um, okay, so let's talk about let's talk about the picture in the black space separately. So this picture that we're looking at, this is bloods. That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at one point or another, you was affiliated heavily. Oh majority of my life, bro. Okay. Since right. since 16, 15, I was bulletproof. Uh, 16 going on 17. Uh, I came home on the wild blood. That's Billy Badass himself. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's the AKA for the non trade gangsters. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was non trade one of the, the first hood in New York City. It's a fact. And uh, big blood from all of everybody doing rest in peace. That was about what it was a period. And I'm only saying that because a lot of niggas be claiming shit and ain't no real stain to they shit. They shit not authentic, my nigga. And you ain't really blood because you affiliated with that shit. You had to put it to work, bro. The black spades really just, uh, a lot of them niggas went down to drug usage. Uh, and, you know, prison and just getting old. But they ain't really, a lot of the black spades ain't really fuck with the blood shit like that. It was more or less the God bodies that kind of Adopted into the the blood system. I mean, the jail and shit like that. What was the? Could do you have any idea what the idea of the black space was at the inception? What that was about? How it became? It was a, it was a street gang. If I'm not mistaken, it was in the Bronx, uh, around Patterson, uh, Patterson Projects, and on. Um, they was official. They was a street gang that was big, like one of the biggest. And um, I know, like, you know, one of them used to be a hitman for Guy Fisher. I knew him personally. I mean, he kind he raised me. I'm saying everybody know uh, Gary Gator. You know what I'm saying 
um, Spanky, old hat nigga from Patterson. Uh, I ran Barkley, her uh, heavyweight champion of the world from Patterson. Um, I know of him, his family, two of the Barkleys. I mean, so it was just, uh, I think, you know, class and drug money, man. Just a lot of drug money, man. They was keeping it classy, though. But they was, they was, you know what I mean, going to come for you. I think that was the street gang that really was heavy into drug money. Word. Why do your IG keep getting canceled? You know what I'm, I, you know what my shit keep getting canceled. That's bro. above my anything, pay grade. I, that's any, I don't know. Anything, anything against the system, they not, they not fucking with that. If it's, if it's going against the popular stimuli of what's going on with TV, they're going to try to take it out of the picture by any means. Now, they got so wicked with they slowing down your keyboard character typing. Like, they making your shit lag to the point where you just give up on one sentence. So, that's why I just hopped on truth. Like, yo, I'm gonna, and then just to really go see if it's my phone, every other platform, no problem. Just Instagram. And Instagram, I can't, I ain't been able to go live in almost a year, bro. People be crying about a couple months. My shit been almost a year. You feel me? That's not even heard of when I just opened this account. <laughs> Look, I haven't been able to go on live for a year. That means my last account never could go live. So when they banned that one, I opened a new one. And the first time, the first day, I still can't go live. And this is on a whole new account. I didn't do nothing. It's no marks against it, no nothing. Which means it's an agenda against me, bro. How and many accounts? How many, how many accounts you done had canceled? About nine. Oh my god. About nine. You feel me? And it's crazy because the message is that real. Like if other people's message was threatening. They would they would get the same effect. Trust what me. Did they you say, but, what did you say? What are you saying on IG that is making them no, this, see you as I'm a threat? Saying, I'm saying facts, truth, no fuck, suck, bitch, hoe, none of that, none of that, niggas. You know you, yo, bro. I seen them all. I had to report it. This is the first time I reported some shit like a real bitch, nigga, bro. Nigga, this, a female had a nigga on the bus whacking off, bro. And I'm like, yo, bitch. If you ain't go tell a bus driver or nothing, you had to get perplexed by that nasty ass trauma. Why the fuck would you upload that shit on the gram so the world gotta be perplexed by that nasty ass shit? Out, yo, bro, I was infuriated, my boy. Nobody, Instagram ain't take that down. They didn't take that down, and you know everything else they don't take down, but they scared of my words, my boy. Have you contacted IG? Yeah. I tried to, but ain't no real way to contact IG because it's read by artificial intelligence that people don't know. Instagram itself and most of these platforms are not ran by humans. They're ran by a computer. That's it. And so you've got a Truth Social account. Of course. Okay, so for those that don't know, Truth Social is a... Uh, multimedia platform, sort of like a Twitter type deal, but owned by 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, currently stock tanking like a muff. So you one of the 17 people that's keeping keeping true social. I know why that's the stock taking because it's so hard for people to to detach. You know what I'm saying? And yo, bro, people have a lot. You think people got a lot invested in a bank account. <laughs> Niggas got a lot invested in the Instagram, my boy. Like people's whole life are is tied up into one social media platform. They're not even fucking with Facebook no more. Right? So this is the real reason why it's even though we know they censoring us, we know they doing weird shit. We know they they algorithm tricking motherfuckers. They we know that they race baiting and doing all this shit. We still can't leave the platform. That should let you know something about complacency, too, man, with people. You know what I'm saying? Because even me, it's hard for me to just say, you know what, fuck. And now you know they're doing me bad, but I'm still on the ground. You feel me? Right. I'm still 
I'm still it's 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 because it's that it, it made itself that resourceful in our day to day lives. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna slowly, you know what I'm saying, wean myself off of that shit like cigarettes. You know what I mean, I can't I can't be far, I can't be willingly giving my time, effort, and messages to a, a place that's censoring me, bro. Like with, without even being without it being fair, I'm good, man. What is you saying? Because your audience is not on true social. So, so what you be saying over there on True Social? Because who you Nothing. talking to? I did. That was like my second post. I did. I, I haven't been on that. I ain't right, you can't get you can't get busy on True Social because your audience is not there. They yeah. don't, they no, don't know about the, the, no, the same thing for Instagram. Yo, I gotta just start spreading the word. I gotta I gotta be an influencer. I mean, because before Instagram paid for promotion of his business, the people was the promoters. And I'm saying, yo, you got Instagram? Yo, you got Instagram? You got Instagram. I got Instagram. Once that, once we pick that up, you know, we could do something on the True Social Network. And why not, bro? They not censoring us. I don't care who it's ran by, because we know for a fact it ain't ran by Donald Trump, slow ass. So we why why not fuck with it? It's 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 dealing on equality, and I like that. You feel me? I like that. That's an even playing field, bro. That's an interesting way to look at it. Hmm? Because it's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, because it's a platform that's created because probably because dude got kicked off Twitter before the other guy bought the joint. So it's like we kind of, you know, we don't we don't have a passion to create a platform that's like Twitter. We just need another outlet. So I don't know. Um, I would be happy if we did one of them shits like of our own, with, you know, indigenous people. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Like some shit we run, we but we can't afford ten thousand servers. Well, let me let me let me give a shout out to, to to Isaac Hayes, the third, I believe, son of Isaac Hayes, legendary soul musician. He got a thing called fan base, and he looking for investors in that joint right there. You know what I mean, so there is a Look, brother out that's there. That's our problem, bro. That's our problem right there, bro. We got so much equity and capital between one another. Even if it's just a dollar, we we are not the minority. We are the majority, bro. We always having to beg for loans and beg for fucking investors. You know who's going to invest if we begging, right? You know why we begging? Because hmm. the people closest to us is ignoring. So that's that's what has person screaming out and begging. Because the people closest to you, they not paying you no mind. They not giving you your just due. So the only people going to invest. It's outside entities, man. It's people that you really don't want a hand in your business. So well, it's kind of like necessarily. Let me because let me say this: Isaac Hayes the third, to his credit, will go on his page and talk to the people that follow his page and say, "Yo, come on, put some money into this thing." As, as far as I'm concerned, that's giving the average individual an opportunity to get that in on rough. the ground floor. It's rough. You want to know why? Because we ain't, bro. Whoa. That's why, bro. Listen, because now you just said some shit I might have to edit. We, what the fuck? Oh, my fault, my fault. Like, my, you fault. Know. my fault. My yeah. fault. My fault. <laughs> but we ain't, we ain't there, bro. That's all. Like, you got, you got my son. What's the dude, though? Is it, what's the guy that has the white parties for all of the entertainers? Uh, Meek Mill and them cats. He be having all of the famous guy white parties. I can't think of his name, man. Is he's not uh, an entertainer? No, he's he's just a, a super rich white guy. Super rich. You ain't talking about Lear Cohen. Oh, no, hold on, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna just type in white party, rich white guy. Oh my god. What? It's gonna pop up. Guarantee. Look, there you go. <laughs> So you don't think I'm lying. The party is right there. You probably can't make out, but his name is Mike Michael Rubin. So wait a minute. You mean tell me if, if I type if the, if the audience types in white party, rich white guy, Michael Rubin going to pop up? I just did it. Okay. No, and, and people might not think like that, but that's how computers work. Like, it's really no... I'm really a, a fucking coder without knowing the linguistics of coding. But this shit is really just common sense. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's that will definitely pop up. Now, um this guy is a 
multi-millionaire, whatever, billionaire guy. And before that, he was a young kid in high school and he made his first million in high school, still in school, by getting a $2.5 million loan or something of that nature. Uh, existential no sorry I'm, I'm that's cash he made a million dollars and i think he got a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan sum to that nature now we could stop the story right there who you know that's my color your color and any of your rolodexes and your mind that in high school could have hit up a friend for two hundred thousand fuck it two, three thousand it's not happening between us. We don't have those finances or resources. And that's the problem, bro. So we're always going to have to be able to say, yo, damn, bro, my fault. That's a good idea, but I ain't got it right now. And I can't even look at you crazy because I got to understand, damn, it's a struggle between us. So only option we got is to go into, you know what I'm saying? So then it puts us in, in the realm of no matter what we create, it's going to be either directed executive, I mean, uh, uh, directed, controlled, resourced, or, you know, by another entity, by other people. So we ain't going to really ever have the control that way till we just put a dollar together. Put a dollar. Start with a dollar. But we can't even do that, bro. We on the records talking about coke this, coke that. You hit my music, so that's why I'm talking like this. I don't expect no nigga that's got the ski mask on, Talking about boom, boom, kill, 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 kill. And I mean, coke, coke to even get on no shit and talk like this. So this is why I'm necessary. You know what I'm saying? This is why Instagram going to flag all my pages. Because why am I going against the grain? You feel me? Why are you telling people the truth, bro? You feel me? Why you got people not worried about money more than they worry about their soul, bro? What's up with you? You not going with the grain. Now we're going to do what they did in the mo the movie Inception. You notice? You ever seen the movie Inception? Not to, not to skip topics. But the shit with Leonardo DiCaprio. You ever seen that? You can always skip topics. Talk your talk. That's why you're here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen that movie. The the Well, it's... Damn, man. I, I, if you've seen it, it would have been uh, a lot more understandable. <laughs> but basically, in a, a dream world or you know, in the mind, in the psychology of another man, it's like, you know, his thoughts or perceptions is like entities and, and humans. So it's like they were they were diving into the minds of other people, putting uh doing thoughts of inception, like uh planting seeds of thoughts in other people and their psychology while they were sleeping, shit like that. But they would have to sneak in the mind and do it. And this is the thing. They show any time like the 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 guy went against the programming or went get, went against protocol, and the regular beings was able to see oh shit this motherfucker don't don't belong here or he's not normal he's not like everybody else they will all jump on him. I'm talking about hundreds of people in in this mind. They would jump on him and he couldn't escape. He couldn't break through. And I'm saying you probably don't get it, but the people that seen Inception know exactly what I'm talking about. Um. It's one of Leonardo DiCaprio's best movies, bro. Um, and it's crazy because that's what's happening today. You know what I'm saying? If you speak out, if you speak different, if you speak truth, everybody's jumping on you. Everybody's trying to silence you. Everybody is, yo, you're crazy, crazy, crazy. But, but bro, if everybody's the same, right, and they're going towards the same demise, it would behoove you to listen to somebody that's willing to stand on their own to the and, and, and walk to the beat of their own drum. Even if you don't agree or whatever, just get the information. What has been and your success? What, 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 what do you think has been your success rate in getting your particular message out to the people? Super successful, just not this is the thing about the God work. This shit is spiritual, this shit is elemental. So these people you see with all of these fan bases and all this, these big numbers, that shit is a lot. Those people do not like them. Those people do not love them. The minute they slip up, the minute they do something that is unpopular or unfavorable to these fanatics, they're all going to turn on them and jump ship to the next artist. 
I have soul brothers, bro. I have real supporters. I have I have people that tell me personally how I, my music have, has changed their lives. And for the better, not, not to stress them out, give them answers, bro. That's what I'm here for. My message ain't going to give them perplex a nigga, make a nigga confused. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come forth with some answers, with some wisdom, and with some experience of, of the shit that I've been through. And that's another thing. I'm going to let a nigga know and, and remind them over and over so a nigga don't really ever play with me outside of this square. I'm poor, nigga. I'm broke just like you, nigga. Don't get this shit twisted whatsoever. Don't look at these clothes. Get this shit twisted. Don't look at these holes. Don't look at these bros. Don't look at this gold and get this shit twisted, nigga. I'm fucked up just like you. Because if I'm out of this bitch and all of my family fucked up, where am I at? I just got myself vulnerable and just willing to attack its power in numbers. It's power in unity. I'm never, ever going to feel good enjoying my space by myself of happiness. I'm going, I'm not that being, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't no graduation party over here when I drop no mixtape or when I drop an album. It ain't no party, nigga. All these niggas is celebrating struggling or celebrating or celebrating being a supremacist to their own kind. Because the only reason you got a nigga even popping champagne because they popping it next to a nigga they know they got more money than. It ain't no celebration any other time. At that time, it's just fellowship. You know, it's just speaking. It's just congregating in the right manner. Logic is being discerned across the table. These niggas, yo, where the mother we lay? Yo, the bitches and yo, that's come on, bro. We know where that shit taking us. I don't stand for that. You and so your I'm truth keep going. Open. Keep going. Do your you thing. You feel me? Because a lot of people can't talk this shit, man. They can't, bro. Because they know they need that. And I'm saying I ain't gonna talk about them or that, but we know what we talking about. They need that. I don't need it, and I know how to manage. It's nothing. It's nothing. I mean, it's nothing. It's really nothing. It's all an illusion. Man. If you can't manifest a, a brand new clean outfit, man, it's 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 fucked up for you out here, man. You feel me? You gotta. It, that's the smallest thing in the world to be thinking about, bro. A, a, a belt or some shit like that, bro. I've been through that process. I know that shit got a lot of rough ties on us because we ain't have nothing to feel, I mean, proud about or feel, you know, like we good and, and we got something that we could feel substantial about with the, you know, European that got it all. So, yeah, we wanted his clothes. And I mean, we wanted the same cars and all that. We wanted all that. But, I mean, we, we just got to grow from that, bro. You just got to grow from that, family. And that's why I'm headed with the message. I mean, shout out to P. Rest in peace, P. I mean, big P, prodigy. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, rough too, but um, prodigy because I'm taking the baton. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't, I ain't on no coat teller fan, fan loving shit. I'm taking the principles because we are air likes and I'm moving forward with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to let, because they took this guy out, they took this guy out, that's going to put me in a box of fear. And now I'm just doing trendy music. And, nah, bro, I can't rap like that. You know what I'm saying? The people, they they going to take you. Listen, man, we dying every day. I'm going to stand for something. I, I want you to talk to me about, and for people that don't know, why is the Bronx so different than every other place on the planet, including the other boroughs? Well, I say it's the number one. It's because it's all ethnicities, and it's like a a melting pot. Being it's connected to Harlem, so you got the Italians, you got the Blacks, you got the the Spanish, and then in the Bronx, it's the same thing. So it's compiled. It's only a small bridge separating Harlem and the Bronx. So you could just say. You know, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, all the money making and all of that, that's in Harlem or that was in Harlem. Now, it's not about shooting violence and the young boys getting crazy in the Bronx. And um, that got a lot to do with the drill music. If you know the Bronx drill rap scene is crazy. You know what I'm saying? So that shit has really got a, a real driving force 
and the, what's going on in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? All the different little gangs and all that doing what they do. You know, I'm 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 older, so I don't really be in the mix of that shit. But that's really what it is. It's the it's the Bronx drill rap. And being that they ain't really gentrified this motherfucker yet. You know what I'm saying? You see Brooklyn, that shit get a little gentrified. You got even Queens a little bit. But the Bronx, they ain't really hit yet. You know what I mean? So it's still all the wild cowboys out here. You said you stay out. Like, you, the young guys are doing what they do. That's on them. You stay out the way from that. But is this what's happening in every single successive generation where we say that's the next generation, we're going to let them do them? We never stepped in to stop the downward spiral. And so we keep on looking worse and worse as each generation comes into its own. Because us as older cats is stepping out the way and saying that's them. Nobody getting, yeah. nobody checking them early. That's a fact. I feel like that's a fact. And I got, I got young bros to this very day. You know what I'm saying? I see them outside. They trap, they, they sell their side and all that. I sit, I build with them, and I ain't talking to them on their level. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking to them on a higher level to give them a different perspective. You know what I mean? Different different understanding on things. And they don't be, you know what I mean, disrespecting me or shrugging me off or, you know what I'm saying, making me feel like that shit is irrelevant. They be soaking up the game. So it just let me know it's the approach, number one. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these older cats be too, too old minded. Now I'm saying, like you gotta, you gotta be able to find a a medium to relate. Now I mean, so a lot of older people don't. They just try to come dictate, dictating it. Now I mean, see what's going on with the young boy. Like let them know you was him and shit like that before you start trying to instill some moves and all that. Nigga might give you some time. Oh, but they got the brains yeah. turning to mush. Right. So when you got music now where some of the most popular music is either the same exact unintelligible cadence when the soul have been taken out of your music because it's all auto tune. Shout to T-Pain. You know what I mean? Shout to Zap and Roger to know how to use the vocoder. Shout to Stevie Wonder. who you, Right. But now every single song that damn near that's a hit is some mumble shit. And now we got you, you. You talk to listen. You talk to somebody that's twenty one or twenty two. Your average. And I was doing this in the nineties, and they was mm. telling me this. Yo, I'm like, why you don't listen to X Y Z? Listen, nigga, because for me it's the beat. I'm not really. I don't. He he on that rapidy rap. I ain't trying to hear that. So now you got a majority of the young people coming up only appreciating probably the worst of the art form, the shit that's not going to make you think, turning their brains to mush. Not only that, everything in this culture is microwave. Everything is microwave. We get our news from headlines on Instagram. Right? They see the headline on Instagram, they run with it, microwave. They're not going to read primary sources. They're not going back doing the studying. You know, you know why? Because the primary sources have been have been proven to be fraudulent, bro, and to have agenda, bro, or wow. be backed by agenda, bro. People don't wow. want that no more. So See, I got questions. I got questions, what? and this is where you want me. Do you, you? This is where we about to go with this right now, because you know well, yeah, where I'm about to go. go. Let's go now. We ain't go. We ain't gonna do that. Let's get. Let's stick. Let's stick on the joint. Let's stick on the joint. Let's stick no, but I mean, but, but, but I mean, listen, because you can double, triple fact check your shit. There's ways to get to the truth out here. When you talk about right. agendas and propaganda, I mean, it's a way to objectively get to the truth. What I'm saying is, right. regardless of how somebody might fudge the numbers, we got a youth that's not intellectually curious. The idea of learning. They the are idea. curious. They just not be. They just not be stimulated the proper way. Pause. You feel me? They do. They want to learn, but these kids is more on the autist autism spectrum, right? And this is a fact. So you got to deal with them in a more 
creative, nurturing manner, bro. Like you cannot, you can't come at these kids certain ways because their emotions is 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 no. hardwired differently, bro. I think we're making and excuses. I think we're making excuses. Let nah, me tell you. Nah, it's not excuse. Well, well, we could call it excuses, but you think the other motherfuckers ain't making no excuses for theirs and making accommodations? I ain't talk about them. Here's what I'm talking about. Right, we got to do the same. We can't be so harsh on our own, bro. No, we got to be harsh. That's the whole point. Tough love is the whole point. Because let me tell you why. Because they'll say we got a we got a kid in here that's got ADHD. Somebody gonna be mad at me when I finish this, but you got a kid in here that got ADHD. He can't fucking sit still. Yip yip yip, running around class clown, whatever. Right, and now you see the prevalence of these type of kids. I don't we. We didn't have them types for real like that. Maybe we did, but watch this. My father had this perfect cure for ADHD. He called it an ass whooping, right? So you go to school, you want to tell me this is boom, boom. These are all reasons why. That, no, I'm gonna, my dad, I'm going to give my dad all the reasons in the world that whooping coming. Now, miraculously, when I go to school the next day, I don't got ADHD no more. It's a motherfucking medical miracle. Right. But this is what the, this this is what happens. I'm gonna tell you what happens, bro. That's psychologically done through slavery conditioning, bro. That is a fear it. tactic. Listen, it. it's a fear tactic, bro, because the only reason the see you 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 didn't it didn't leave you. <laughs> you were still that hyperactive kid, but you know what happened? You fear. The fear was more than your urge to do that, and the fear is what made you suppress that. Now fear is what will make you grow up hating people for no reason, right? <laughs> fear is what will make you look at the motherfucker up and down you just met, like what? It came from our parents, bro. Fear will make me say no to my mans when he say, let's go steal this car. No, it won't. No, it won't. No, it, no, it did. No, it won't. It absolutely did. It fear absolutely of your father did. With, yeah, oh, no, oh, no. Yes. This is this is what I mean, though. That's fear of a man. When you get outside of the the the, the jurisdiction of you, just say hypothetically, you was a kid, this happened, and your pops got sick and ended up in the hospital when you was a kid. Oh, you're going to be doing some shit that babysitter going to have problems with you. They ain't going to know what to do with you. You want to know why? Cause that you've been suppressing that shit the whole time, nigga. We he's, feel me. It's listen, just what it listen. is. He's doing his job while he's there in the hopes that when he's not there, I will have an understanding as so to his job why is to beat your ass. As, as he uh, that I'll have an understanding as to why he did what he did. You know what got happened to me? I, I got it. I got. I mean, my ass whipping and all that plenty times. Like, but the main things that stuck with me with good favor. And my and my soul was not those ass whippings. Those ass whippings created trauma, and the reason why I beat this fuck out of nigga in one point two seconds, bro. Right. Because of that, the anger that I still resent from from that being done. Because some kids don't, uh, they they just not unknowing. Some kids know, like, oh, this is not right. This hurts me. Like, I wouldn't do this to you. I wouldn't do this to another kid. They don't understand or know how to register this shit. I was one of them kids. You know what I'm saying? So every every kid didn't handle that or take the same avenues of handling that the right way, bro. You get what I'm trying to say? And we can't so we cannot we can't we cannot dismiss the trauma that you're speaking of. I also had that trauma. My pops might have went a little bit overboard. Shout the pops. Because well, I ain't mad me? at you. Now he might have went overboard. Before, before we before we jump, what stuck with me though. Wasn't the ass whipping? It was when I had to stay in a push up position for like 30 minutes, right? That shit stuck with me every day. Like, uh, that shit still with me. You understand? Know I mean? To the yeah. point I do it now because it was a good thing. You understand? Know I, mean? I had got made to write a book, like, copy a book, like, word for word. Now my penmanship is through the roof. But other than that, I have no problem with writing. Now, I have no problem with using these things as ther as positives. Now, you know what I'm saying? I, I was on punishment for like six, seven months. Not coming out of my room, nothing. I had a Calvin and Hobbes book. 
I know that life. A typewriter. Yeah. And a notebook. That's why I'm one of the most creative motherfuckers you're going to find. So let me say this. All- so when we talk about the fact that I really love Zaza's music, when we talk about this, we talk about I love the bars. And we always ask the question as, as people who, journalists who interview hip hop, MC, celebrities, and whatnot. We say, well, how did your pen game get so good? So you're trying to say to me now that this admiration that I have for your penmanship. Blame it on trauma. Just... But you got to understand, though, that was the precursor. Like, that was me as a child, bro. But when I got older, these things became nature, natural. So when I was in school and I was supposed to be doing my my home, my work and paying attention to the teacher, I had notebooks full of raps and drawings. You know what I'm saying? But before that, it was before raps, it was drawings. You know what I mean? So I would that was my first love, drawing and all that art. Have That's you ever had is. have you ever had professional counseling slash therapy to deal with some of the trauma issues? Yeah, but it's not it ain't to you know to keep it a hundred man, that guy, whoever is doing it, whoever's doing the therapy they not they don't they don't got the answers, man. You feel me? I wouldn't even waste my money <laughs> or their time because they not gonna have the answers. You know what I mean? They gonna feed me something that I already know about myself. It's not about the knowing. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have that willpower built up. You gotta have that discipline right. You gotta have that focus together. You gotta have, you know, you gotta have a lot of other virtues together. Maybe there's an overcome. issue. Maybe there's an issue that you're wondering how you can best deal with it, and maybe a therapist can help with that. I, what's, I mean, what's the issue? Though? I say I this mean, as a guy that I say me. I say this as a guy as a guy that went through therapy, right? It anger issues, snap, you know what I mean? Quick temper type stuff, and then I was taught certain things about why we go from feeling a certain way, like disrespected, hurt, or whatever, and to get all the way to anger. I learned what primary versus secondary emotions was. So before I didn't understand why I'm about to go off, and it took me a long-ass time before somebody could explain to me the why. And when they explained to me the why, that was the key to unlock everything that was more or less like, oh, so now I can feel it coming. And then I recognize the signs and the signals and I go, okay, now that's something I can think about. Instead of me dwelling on the fact that I want to fuck you up. Now I'm thinking about why. Well, how do we get here? And now how do we get out of this without causing damage to myself and to somebody else? Because right when we get involved in some of these things, when we, when we flip, we causing damage to a lot of people at the same time. And you could be the one inflicting it. Somebody might be laying at your feet bloody. You won the fight, right. but you damaged yourself in the process. Right. You damaged I mean, yourself in the process. That's definitely, that's definitely I mean, if, let's say if a motherfucker go to cop, you damage yourself. If, if, you, you, if you get away with it, you go home, you still thinking about, I hope if, you know what I mean, if people got a, a sense of humanity about them is something that they think about. How now nah, the guy had it coming? That's a whole different thing, right? Somebody put their hands on my mama. I don't care no more, right? But somebody just—he's a bitch. What's what I'm about to do now? What I'm about to really do now? And see, this is where we talk about evolution. Like he, so he said that. Well, they—they they, they be online. My man who got a page, dude in this. Uh, comment section talking about want to beat his ass. Why you threatening the guy online? Yeah, that that type of shit. Unless you know the guy personally, but other than that, that type of shit you can't really pay no attention to. And that's the main, you know, that's the main fight in life. Like just the mask of your emotions. It's the main. That's the main battle. You know what I'm saying. So I slip. You know what I mean, I slip. I'm in the body. I'm in the flesh too. I'm gonna be honest, because I think you be angry sometimes. Man, you better be. Anger gets shit done, man. Well. Do you think you be angry about the right shit all the time? All the time. 
all the time. Every time you angry, time. you could look back on this past year and all the shit that you was angry about. You felt like you I'm exerted sure. the right I'm amount sure. of energy. Well, no, nah, that that I have felt like you know maybe I exerted too much energy on certain things. That ha yeah, that happens. But do I feel I be having the right, or do I be feel like I'm in the right? A lot of the times, yeah, and I feel like a lot of people don't be speaking up for what is right. And they be knowing it because motherfuckers be talking to me in private on one on ones. Like, yo, Zai, you right, but you gotta stop wilding. You know, you coming at me, dude, talking that talk, but you gotta stop wilding. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck is wilding? Telling the truth? That's wilding? The way you I do is. <laughs> but look, look, the nigga up there with the, with the, with the money stack this high, with the guns on the bed, and the whole bitch on the couch over here, he ain't wilding. He's not wilding, but I'm wilding because I'm telling niggas truth without saying no disrespectful terminologies, bro. It's the truth that's really just bothering niggas, bro. It's the truth. You feel me? It's the truth. Listen, like you will one, come, one, you'll, two. You'll, you'll come on the page. You'll, you'll, you'll come on the page of a person that you know and you cool with, and you'll be like, I don't support this clown shit. Like, stuff like that. Because I'm, because look, the most official shit, the most official thing is somebody being real with me. So the most official thing I could do is be real with you. I know you ain't no bitch. I hope you don't want my money. You know what I'm saying? Hope you ain't no buster and right. you want my weed. I hope you just want me to keep it fucking real. I don't fuck with that. So when you come around me, just know don't even mix me with whatever that is because I'm letting you know from long range don't fuck with that because what a nigga do is come to you from long range with some shit you don't fuck with because you ain't say nothing he got all in your face with it. Mm. Now you're bothered. Now you're getting hot and you might say the wrong vocabulary about some shit that you could have been letting them know. Yo, bro, I don't agree with that. That's not my twist. Keep that over there. For instance, if nigga sniff coke and do rap, I guarantee you, he probably don't fuck with me. Guarantee you. We ain't chilling. We ain't in no studio sessions. We might have did one song and that was it. And this is because my character's in my music. Man. I'm not going to lie. I'm not doing that shit for no favors, no freebies, because this is really like my life. And I feel like I control my destiny. So if I'm not into in one room, I'll get into another one. If that window, I'll get in. It don't matter. I'm going to get in. You heard, guys? <laughs> I'm going to fucking get in. It don't matter. So these things is just rules and 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 creeds that I live by and come out in my music. You speak to me on the phone. I'm the same person. People that know me in person know I'm the same person that in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not doing no pump faking. I could I could lose tomorrow. I could get my fucking world rocked tomorrow. But I will remain the same. I lost before and I got my world rocked before, my nigga. I'm going to be the same person. No fraudulence. It got to be one out of the hundred. Like, you know what I mean, it got to be. Everybody saying this is what's popping. And we like, yo, nah, man, there's stains on that. Yo, nah, man, that shit ain't, that shit ain't real. You ain't see how that, this is, it got to be somebody that's introspective and, and really looking at this shit for what it should be. You know what I'm saying? And seeing it for what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where niggas get a little fucking retarded. Like Kanye, nigga. You still in reality, my nigga. Like you got to deal with reality how reality is. You can't deal with reality how you see things and how you want them to be. But you can shed some light on how you see things. You know what I'm saying? But he started bugging when he started looking at the actual world the way he sees it. Nah, money. You got to stay in this real, this real world. You know what I mean? And you come and program and do what you do. You trying to talk? You try, you you having a conversation of understanding on two different levels. In other words, he could there's certain things he could speak about inside this box, but when now when he sort of like what you be going through, when if he goes mm -hmm. outside of that, now you might be destroying the you, whole mission. You you because it's it's non relatable. I can't relate to. That's the biggest problem with Kanye. 
it's it's like your peak. You know what it is? It's crazy. Cause if you know, if you you gonna feel it when I say it, like it's like niggas know it's the truth, but it's like in a sense, like niggas still like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's it's like a, the same shit. It's like yo, I know what you say, God. It's like my whole soul, all my atoms is telling me you giving me the right shit, but I can't relate. I can't. It's a fucking square and a triangle hole, like. Bro, it's I, I I don't know what to do with it, at least right now. You know what I'm saying? I can't take on a Orsini family right now. But what can we do about this poverty situation? What can we do about getting 20 of you multi-millionaire motherfuckers to put together some money for a right cause? Can we talk about that? Because you talking about what, the owner of Reba? I don't even know that nigga. And he's not even took. That's beyond us. You feel me? It's not relatable. So people just say, I mean, this nigga's crazy, man. This nigga's crazy. You feel me? Because it's not relatable. Though it might be true. We don't know that nigga who owns Reebok or owns this clothing brand or who this board meeting group of people are. So it's not relatable to us, fam. Why is your Yeezys $300? Why are you selling niggas parachutes for pants? Nigga, that's what we want to talk about. You feel me? You gotta be relatable. Relatable, my guy. He's he's gone. My guy is gone. I've been rapping since rappers been rapping. Mm. Since it's been since everybody was why you think these my thing get off topic, man. Why you think these rap niggas is so nice at basketball, yo? Talk to me. Why you ask yourself that? These niggas was basketball players, my nigga. They was not in the street, bro. They were really tournament to tournament, basketball, high school, school kids, bro. And it shows, bro. You feel me? I play hella bad from Harlem. I play hella ball. You will not catch me. It's it's just certain shit I just, I be knowing, bro. I be knowing, my nigga. Like, you feel me? All I was doing was rapping. That's what I'm saying. Fuck the street shit. Fuck the gangster shit, nigga. All I was doing was rapping, my boy. Ask me what I was doing in the sixth grade. What rapping. were you doing in the sixth grade? Rapping. Just turning blood. Factory. I was bulletproof before I turned blood. So in the fifth grade, I was blood affiliated. That ain't really shit because you got niggas born into that shit left and right in Cali. So it ain't really no. I'm just saying in New York, everybody know my face. I mean, I mean ain't, you ain't going to never hear really no smut shit. Only thing you might hear, yo, this nigga ran off on a plug. I don't care, nigga. You met me when I was hungry, bro. That's a, that's a different nigga, man. You feel me? It's a whole different nigga. What is some lessons that today's crop of rappers is missing? And I don't even care how old they is. Anybody. Go what is that soul. missing? Over, over a trend? Go with the soul, bro. Every time. Go with how you feel. Cause I I this is what I come to when I'm in when I'm in song making mode. And I'm and I'm a master creator, but I still come to this doorway. What's hot? What I got to say. Right? Two doorways. <laughs> What's hot? And what I got to say. I've mastered this shit to the point I've been able to merge this shit, my boy. You know what I'm saying? So now, what I got to say is hot. It's, hot. it's hard for a lot of niggas to do that. It takes time. Like, at least 10,000 hours of, of craftsmanship. You feel me? Sleepless nights with this shit. On trains, buses, in the street, writing with this shit. I mean, your food spilling. You got to really, this all you got to do. This is all I did. Nigga, niggas went to work. I was writing. <laughs> Bro, niggas had jobs. I, ain't, I wasn't working. I was in the street. I'm writing. I was in the street just because, really, I wanted to do this rap shit so much. It didn't, the rap shit and the, and the type of, what it took to do it, it didn't, co it didn't align with a nine to five. Know what I'm saying? It wasn't really like the drug shit heavy because I always was smart with it. Like, 
I know that shit ain't the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? I'm always going out. You know what I mean? Go with what I'm best at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I learned how to sell drugs. I ain't the best at that shit, but this music shit, yeah, shit mean. Um, I'm, so here's here's something that I do. I, sometimes I be having stressful days, right? So, um, I have a stressful day. Sometimes I might eat something I ain't supposed to eat, right? I like some. I like the trash, all right. Or I might take a sip, whatever. Do you think I'm letting myself off the hook by treating myself because I had a bad day, or would it be more virtuous to just fight my way through the struggle, deprive myself of that instant gratification? Oh. Uh. Well, given whatever your journey is, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your journey is where you headed, is I mean, does is where you headed, uh, depending on all that disciplinary factor, you know what I'm saying? Is is where you going, does it require that? You know what I'm saying? And then that'll let you know if it's gonna stress you the fuck out or not. Because when you know the role requires it, like mandatory, it's like you're gonna get down to business, you're gonna cut it out. You gonna stop doing it? You know what I'm saying? But most people's lives, man, like say for instance, the motherfucker, I don't know, uh, motherfucker smokes or something. I don't know. For instance, smokes. You know what I'm saying? If they don't see their life in a, in a space where they have to not smoke, you know what I'm saying? Or they don't see themselves with like a health restriction. If they don't see that for themselves, they probably not going to take the notion to cut it out. You know what I'm saying? That's usually why. It takes something bad to happen or negative to happen to prompt them to change. You know what I'm saying? So are you saying that I should treat myself and not cheat myself? Well, I'm saying that it's, it depends on you. It depends on your journey, bro. I'm not going to tell you to not treat yourself. Why? Because I'm, I'm for the left and the right. I, I'm not, I'm not one-sided. Like, Right isn't just good. You get it? Right isn't just good, bro. You understand? There have been a lot of murders for the right reasons. There have been a lot of rebellions for the right reasons. There have been a lot of chaos for the right reasons, my nigga. Just because it's right doesn't mean it's going to be good. So I bring that to say, if drinking is what brings out the best in you, I would never tell you to deprive yourself of what brings out the best in you. But then if it's giving you kidney failure, or if you're getting sick, or if you know it's causing you actual harm, it behooves you to stop, right? But other than that, if it's none of those factors, nigga, do what you're, you know what I'm saying? Do what you know is right for you. What does Zaza do to relax? Smoke weed. I watch sci-fi movies. Uh, I research a lot of shit all day. You know what I'm saying? And I argue with my girl. That's relaxation? Arguing with your girl? That's what I do. Because that shit be stressful. Man. Talking to girls, man. And, uh, nah, I'd rather argue. Because it's argument, but it'd be like, you know, when you argue with yourself, it's kind of like, you could take it being disrespectful or you could take it like you just vent. <laughs> you just letting the steam off because going outside right now with the energies that's at play in the world, it, it don't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't pay for you to go out there wearing your heart on your sleeve or playing these emotional erratic games. You could lose a lot more than you bargain for. So keep your injustices and your vices or what may be setting you back. Keep that shit to yourself, keep it in your space, keep it in an in area where you can control. This is why a lot of people are dead today. Yo, but um, let me ask you a question. Do you think, do you think it's a, 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 a like a, a disguised hatred for the BX, the Bronx from Queens rappers? Here's what I think. I think I'm not qualified to speak on it. 
right? Because that, listen, that's real. First of all, people want to jump out the window and they want to guess a lot. And then you got to be from there. And your feet got to touch the ground before you start wading into. But apparently, you might think that. I just was I just was trying to see the observation God that's all you know I wasn't talking more personal from my perspective over the fact you know how it's not more Bronx uh positions of power bro in the hip hop game bro everybody is from fucking Queens son every that's what I'm talking about son I'm like damn son only thing I could remember happening is KRS one body and Sam like that. You feel me? And then, you know, Russ is from Russ, Russ really was in Harlem, bro. Everybody, <laughs> I mean, everybody claimed Russ that's in Queens, my nigga. Niggas need to know, man. Russ fucked with Harlem, bro. Heavy first before even Queens. Nigga, his schooling was in Harlem. You feel me? Um uh, what's what's his face? Um, Curtis Blow. Though that's who that's who schooled him. That's who gave him his inception in the game. You know what I'm saying? Um, people got people. I don't know, man. It's like Queens want that mecca or that mothership, that mother spot for hip hop. And I, I, it's I understand though. I be feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? I be I be feeling that way. On a on a business tip, not really personal, because you know I got songs with Queens niggas and all that. You know what I'm saying? So it's not more or less that, it's more or less like business. Like, damn, it's really hard for a Bronx motherfucker to get some leverage in this shit, boy. I'm telling you. Is there a thing? Ain't ain't, ain't there a thing where everybody hate the Bronx though? Is that a thing? I don't know, my nigga. I don't know if it was. If it was, bro, that shit is so whack, my nigga. Cause it's like That's a politics, right? It's like, oh, Queens niggas don't fuck with Bronx niggas, Brooklyn niggas don't fuck with. Like, man, I fuck nigga. I was on the island, my nigga. I fuck with everybody, bro. That was niggas that must they never been to jail or something, bro. Like, and I'm talking about the island. Every borough was there, bro. And niggas talk all that borough shit, borough shit. But let you go to a crib, your your, your borough was low at. I mean, there's only one, two of your niggas in there. Oh, you gonna fuck with the Brooklyn niggas, man? You gonna if you real, you gonna fuck with what's real. It ain't going, ain't no, ain't no borough gonna have you. I mean, moving solitaire individual. You gonna let your nuts hang wherever. So that shit ain't that shit don't apply to me, bro. I fuck with all boroughs. I lived all no, I didn't live in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying in Staten Island. But I lived in all boroughs, and I'm good in all boroughs. Like, I don't got no beef, no way. I don't owe niggas no money. Niggas not looking for me. You know what I mean, got nothing but love for all the boroughs. If if you was given an opportunity, um, I, let's say that they put that light on Za, how would Za hold down the Bronx by making by making projects? Real projects. I'm talking about. I don't even want to put the sauce out there on the camera like that. But just I'm gonna keep it simple. I make whole projects, not just uh, rap involved. You know what I'm saying, but commercial type projects with the biggest names from all other states. Cause this is the thing. Why niggas thought it was so crazy when Big Pimpin came out? You know why? Because it was it wasn't nobody seen that coming and most New York rappers do songs with New York rappers. Or they cuz it's hard kind of to find a medium between like you know say a Midwest rapper and a New York rapper on the same track like it's it's going to be a little little strenuous to find a medium like how what's the what's the level we going to create? Here, where we both not sounding like we on two different islands. You know what I'm saying? So I know how to use my flow in many different manners 
in ways that I think a lot of the people that do got the money don't. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I would show the togetherness, the, the how much New York want to be a part of these other states, how much New York City don't want to have war, don't want to be beefing and showing like, yo, your music is just as important as my music because we building and we making something together. And you know what we're going to make? A whole bunch of big pimpers. New York artists have no value. That's the problem. That's why niggas don't stop here to do shows no more. If you notice, no big names stop here to do no real shows, bro. You, like Ice, Ice Web, v, Bezo, none of these niggas, everybody, Meek Mills, all these niggas skip over New York City. It's not really needed no more. You know what I mean, we don't really have no no value, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's because niggas want to isolate they, they flows, isolate their image, and everybody is scared to be the first person to try something different in New York. Everybody want to tiptoe behind the next. Try something different. You feel me? It's sad to say West Side Upstate, they deserve to be winning because they not thinking inside the box. You think what's our gun is not seeing? Oh shit, this shit is ran down. This shit is redundant. That's why he will you'll see him with a, in a picture with a Marilyn Manson or you know what I'm saying something off the wall. You wouldn't really see because that's what this craft is a fucking about, my nigga. You feel me? Transcending the norm. Yeah, I spit. Yeah, I'm on the corner spitting bars. But have you ever heard a Bronx rapper with a nigga from Nelly neighborhood or something like that? Well, this is how this is sound. You're going to have eyes all over the place, ears all over the place, because it's new, it's innovative, and it's a breath of fucking fresh air. That's all people tell me about my music. Yo, your shit is a breath of fresh air, bro. That's my, that's the, I could, I could put that shit as a tattoo on me. That's how much I've been told that shit, bro. You feel me? So it ain't, it ain't saying, yo, you better than everybody. Or you the you the best rapper. It's just being different, being yourself, being authentic, my nigga. Niggas in New York, it's kind of it's kind of hard for a lot of these people to do that shit because a lot of niggas don't know themselves. Niggas too busy being tough. You feel me? Too busy fronting. You know what I mean, not letting the people know they they homeless. You know what I'm saying, or not letting the people know they baby moms did them dirty. You feel me? It's that type of shit. So how much do you know, I want to really hear your music, nigga? Like, niggas going through real shit out here, bro. How many $50,000 chains can you rap about, nigga? You feel me? How many cars can you rent and then rap about? We got to we gotta have some, some balance here. I feel like niggas like me, you feel me? Niggas like Beneficial, uh, niggas like Pro Dillinger, uh, you feel me? The Mickey Diamonds, the niggas you hear me on songs with. <laughs> Those is the niggas that, you know, we need to be following. We need to be big enough. I don't care about the locks. I don't care about none of these niggas who had it, bro. No disrespect. They had it. They ran it. Now it's our turn, bro. It's our turn, bro. Let New York eat. Let the youngins get on. Let pass some checks around. Open some doors. You know what I'm saying? Buster, what's up, nigga? What's up? I don't want to see that nigga in no weird ass clothes no more. I don't give a fuck who feel away about what I'm saying, bro. I don't want to see none of that shit. Nigga, this is my opinion, so fuck who don't like it, nigga. I don't want to see that shit goofy as hell, bro, and everybody know it, bro. Everybody know it, bro. Everybody know, bro. But fear is a motherfucker, bro. Going against the norm is a motherfucker. Not being sheep. It's, it's scary to some, bro. Know what I'm saying I pride myself, you know I pride myself of that. The more people hate me for doing it, the more energy I get. It's like I feel like the undertaker. You feel me? So this everybody got their vices, everybody got their lanes. That's my I bet you the real gods love me. They love me to death. I'm a gem. I'm like sliced bread to them. You think I'm worried about what the sheep buying about? When the shepherds is over here making y'all move a certain way, y'all don't even know. Nigga, I told the wolf to go over there, nigga. Because you don't listen, so I'm going to go over there. The wolf is mine's too. A little bit ago, you touched on something that I thought I might dovetail back into as it relates to 
maybe not being different enough or um, taking certain chances. So I think this was something that happened in the DMs where I brought down Kennedy's name up, L.A. And I just I said on my page that he really did transform hip hop and R and B because like he got like, the stuff he does with the guy T Fly. I was talking to a friend of mine and we was talking about. I had said he makes songs for the ladies. Listen, Dom Kennedy is thinking about the ladies first. When you listen to the beats that he make, the way he flow. What? You like him more than Jay? I think is Jay Worthy his name? Do I like Dom Kennedy more than Jay Worthy? Yes. Okay. I mean, some people are not going to like that. But, yeah, I think I think Dom Kennedy is smooth as hell. I mean, I think Larry June is smooth, too. You know what I mean? No, that's who I meant. Pardon me, not Jay Worthy. That's who I meant, Larry oh, June. Nah, I'm not going to. I couldn't. That's that would almost be like asking me like who I like more, Raekwon or Andre three thousand. I'm not about to. Yeah, I feel like it's like you know it's a tough it's a tough call with the you know what I'm saying? Yes, but Dip Dip is the big homie though. Oh, that's it. Nip. Oh, Nip. Right. Yeah. So right. Okay. I'm not taking nothing away from Nip on the West Coast. I'm just talking about one specific thing. R and B and and hip hop. Just the way, just the way Dom Kennedy does it. He got that. He got his own lane. And if you go to a Dom Kennedy show, this is the thing about rap. You go to a Dom Kennedy show, you gonna see a lot of women. A lot of the shows that I've been to with my with my underground brethren, it's a sausage fest. Right, you're not gonna see very many ladies. So, shouldn't that be something that New York, some of these artists need? You look at what Vado is doing right now. Vado has got signed to Mary J. He coming through with the Mary J. features now. You know what I mean? Like maybe he opening up that female demographic a little bit when you do that. Listen, my son Vado is a smooth nigga. That's his twist. That's his lane. I don't really got nothing to say about it, though. You know, I don't got nothing bad to say. And about I'm not. Dog. And I'm not saying. And I'm not saying that that's something that you should do. I don't, but because I would, man, would that be interesting to see you? And you would do a song for a lady, but it would come. It would come out different. <laughs> you'd be like. You'd be like the James Evans of this shit. You know what I mean? How James used to talk to Florida. <laughs> Type shit. Type shit. Yeah. Hey, so so Cat Williams said Cat Williams uh in an interview, the <laughs> Shat, the famous Shannon Sharp interview. Club Shay Shay, which that's Club Shay Shay is a weirdo name for a show. I'm still on Shannon Sharp's head. I'm still at Shannon Sharp head because he stole, he tried to steal my intro style. I'm about to go click a random Shannon Sharp video and I'm about to see if he's still trying to do my intros. Because Shannon Sharp trying to steal my intros and try to act like, like they do that type of stuff. People think, oh, yo, this guy's crazy. Nah, go listen to a couple Shannon Sharp intros for his interviews and then look at Intro King. That's me. Go back years. I've been doing it. And you tell me if, if Shannon Sharp, um, the logo for the Denver Broncos. He's the logo. That horse on the side, that's him. That's Shannon Sharp. Tell me, tell me, tell me if this man didn't try to steal my intros. But Cat Williams said in that interview um, a lot of stuff. But people will say, they said, oh, he made it the 2024, the year of the year of the truth. Do you feel like that about 2024? It's the year of the truth. It's definitely a lot, a lot being revealed. <clears throat> I could say that, you know, a lot of, a lot of information that wasn't known. Like I ain't going, and then matter of fact, it ain't even that, man. This, this might be the year true. This the year motherfuckers is not hot in their hands, man. They not hot every day, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Good, bad, ugly, 
and different motherfuckers is showing who they fucking are, man. They can't hide that shit. I, I mean, so I think so. You feel me? I did a whole friendship, family cleanse, all that. So naturally, it just happened naturally. You know what I'm saying? And all. She might be. Um, did, do you think Trina deserved the Tiny Desk concert? Trina? Yeah. Exactly. That's that's my that's my reaction when I saw that she had a tiny desk. I was kind of like, "Can you name? Can uh, you? Can you? I, listen, I don't want to take nothing away from nobody. Oh, can you name me? With Trick Daddy. It's can tough. You, <laughs> you don't know that. That's it. Okay, so that's all I was about to say. Can you? Do you know four Trina songs? Hell no. Hell no. You, you don't know Nan. I know that's one. It was another hit that she had. I forget it because it was probably microwavable type. I don't know. No disrespect. Oh. No disrespect. I'm just saying. Like I turn on YouTube and it's got Trina got a tiny desk. I'm trying to figure out what happened. You gotta have more than a couple cuts. Like your impact need to be better. Like let me stop. Let me stop. Uh is there any le you from New York, man? And so that's the that's the mecca. Is there any legends that you want to work with? Like just uh, legends. Uh hell yeah. I would love to uh you know, everybody know I want to do a track with a priest. That's all the top. Kill a priest? Yeah, that's all the top. Um I feel like that should have happened. Styles P. That would be fire. Man, Zaza uh, and Styles P? Yeah, my son. My son well, niggas don't think my son a legend, bro. I fuck with my son. A Mafia, definitely. That's my son. I'm going to get that, too. I'm going to get that. You, you, you said that you only do features if you really align with a person. Um, yeah, I got to I gotta really fuck. I gotta really at least at least in the moment, you know what I'm saying? Cause you ain't you don't know a nigga super long and you might not know or be around a nigga super long after that. You know what I'm saying? But in the moment, Lord, if this shit is genuine, you know what I'm saying? The shit's solid. You know, we could we could work, you know what I mean? And if I respect the craft too, like I gotta I gotta respect your pen, like gotta respect your pen, man. I'm not on no track. With nobody, I don't respect they pen. What do you think about the trend of sort of well-known, maybe not super famous artists, but kind of well-known artists getting well-known, getting on IG, and then offering their services, saying like, "I'm doing, I'm doing features like two for a thousand or something like that," or you know how they be selling themselves like to up and comers. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got no no manager, if you ain't, I mean, got no team doing it for you, you got to do it yourself. I'm saying. I mean, is that a good investment? Let's say I'm up and coming, right? Let's say somebody's on a on this on a particular level, but I'm below that level. I'm an MC, and I see right. this guy, and he like, yo, and I like this MC, and he like, yo, I'm doing features, I'm giving out discounts. Is it a good investment for me as an artist? To pay this man four hundred dollars, whatever it is, for a verse, is that a return on investment? Am I gonna see that? <clears throat> to me, one, it depends on how important that shit is. To you. That's number one. Like, as far as like culture wise, as far as resume wise, because you know, just having something on the resume is, you know, with a, with a substantial artist is big. But if the artist isn't known like that, it's not really beneficial. I don't, I don't see it being financially beneficial. Right. But, um, creatively what could be made of it, you know what I'm saying? And what you could possibly do with it. So you might believe son is the next best thing. You might think, he got a trajectory or he going somewhere, it's all on you. 
I'm saying, but that's not why they do it, though, right? They're saying whoever got four hundred dollars, you can get a verse from me. There ain't that watering down the product because now you didn't choose that guy because uh, listen, on Nas, life's a bitch. Nas and AZ, the first voice you hear is AZ, right? The AZ and Nas collab made sense, did it not? You can hear the harmony in these guys, the chemistry, the synergy. You heard that on that song. It made right. sense. If I'm a guy and I'm just going to sell my verse to anybody with $300 or $400, what are we doing? What are we I doing? Get it. I get what you're saying. And with that, it is, it, it, it do throw a little shade on it. You know what I mean, definitely. That's not something I do. And, you know, I, I definitely get it. It's like, yo, dad, you willing to work with anybody. You willing to, you know what I'm saying? Put your, your, your name on anything or next to anything for a dollar, even if you don't respect it or know of the person. <laughs> so it do get a little, it, look, it's, it do look a little thirsty. And I might be dumb. Because I never took a dollar for promo from no artist on this page. Listen, I see certain pages, and they're big pages. I ain't going to say what the pages are. I ain't talking about artist page. I'm talking about pages. And they'll like, this. they'll put a video out. This dude coming with the heat, da, da, da. And you look, and I'm like, oh, they got paid. I can tell they got paid. And I sometimes I think all the people that offer me money, I never took it. I never took it because I never wanted the people that follow my shit to think that I'm saying something about somebody cut because I got money. And that's what usually happens though. For the for the for the for the dudes that is taking the money, a lot of them niggas start being fucked niggas for the niggas that they all get money from. So it's like whoever the the person that's getting the giving the money, whoever they not aligned with, it's like whoever has that platform is now aligned with that beef too. So now that person can't use the platform, the dude being biased, he talking show or not not playing his music. He said yeah. niggas start doing weird shit. I know this personally, so they get weird with these niggas, man. Absolutely. And look, I'm like, people can tell you, if you ask around, there's certain people that will tell you, I tried to offer that man money. And I just told the guy, no, I actually listened to some of the music. I was like, yo, I actually like this cut. I'm about to play this cut anyway, but you can't give me no money. You like, you can't give me money. Like you fucking everything up. If you just, if you give me the money, I don't, it don't sit right with me. You know what I mean? Cause again, nobody can ever say, this is why he doing that. You can never say that about powers. You can't say. You could always do your shit. Like, uh, like, Regular shout outs showing your love that you do naturally, but you can have like a, you can create like a set program to where you do something a little extra, go a little above and beyond, create some shit for for a specific person for for fees. You know what I'm saying you got if you got the platform to do so, I don't say it ain't it ain't it ain't bad. It's just as long as you keep your core system of how you show love. I'm saying, you don't, you don't change that. Everything should balance out. But it's like niggas forsake that after they get a taste of the money. Then it's like everything they talk about now got to be for some money. You know what I mean, they start getting thirsty for that bread. Um, are you listening to anybody mainstream at all? I be listening to Matt old music, bro. Like what? I, uh, I be listening to old music or or different pop style music, like. Right? I was just listening to Stephanie Mills. Oh, that's my lady. Probably. You know Stephanie Mills like like I'm thugged out, right? I'm, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I yeah, that's what she like. She said that. She said that. She fuck with. You know what I mean, you got you guys have a little bit of dirt under your, under your fingernails. You know what I mean? You got a little bit. Got some street to you. Stephanie ain't messing with them herbs, man. She ain't doing that. She ain't messing with them nerds, nigga. Nah. Let's see. <laughs> what else? I'll be fucking with man. Uh, hey, Hall and Oates. You fuck with the Hall of Notes? Nope. Uh, I told I got a track called uh called Rain. Um, and what what album that song? 
I think it might be on Omni Poet. And um, that shit is about my daughter, but it's the Sarah Sample. Oh, that's a crazy song. That song will make you cry. <laughs> yeah, that shit hit different. Go check my shit out. It's about my daughter, Fire. Sarah Smile. I probably already heard it, but I forgot because I listened to the Omnipot now. It's so much music out. Niggas oversaturate the shit. You know what I mean? Certain people shit I would listen to. People stop sending me albums. I don't be listening to your fucking albums. I listen to a single. I'm like, oh, this shit is hot. Then I'm going to go get back into the whole album because I'm not listening to 30 albums in a fucking day. I will allow you better. If you soon as 777 drop, you better go listen to that that's what it's called, nigga. I will hold you. I ain't talking shit. But see, Zada type of nigga, Zada type of nigga, and I would tell my people, I'd be like, I can't talk right now because listen, I got to sit on the couch. I got to do this whole album. Like when I when I decide I'm about to do it, then I'm doing it. The phone is off. I'm blazing. And we're going to sit there and listen to the whole fucking thing. And I pray every time. By the time we get three or four songs in, that somebody's not going to let me down. Now, you never let me down. You never let me down. Pro never let me down. Mickey Dyer's never let me down. Like, it's some people that never. I'm not gassing it, bro. This shit is really next level. You heard? It's next level, bro. When you, when you know, when you put the composition out, everything is titled and, yo, bro, EQ, it's, everything is top level, bro. Mastering everything, the beat, production, titles, visual, everything, bro. Everything, bro. And I'm about to drop. The joint, the foundation, the joint with me and Mickey. You know what I mean, we don't care. I got the video already done. You know, that's crazy. And I'll be keeping, if you notice, I don't do sucking shit. Niggas would have, niggas would have led with one of the big heavy hitter features. And I'm saying to try to get people enticed with the joint. Nah, the big features, we going to keep some shit in the tub. That's crazy. Shit with me and Dave, something crazy. Shit with me and Shaheen. That's, it's that's different. That's hit record. Shit, shit with me and Shaw hit record. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, it's just I ain't gonna speak no more. It's just different. And you know I'm really you know different. you know I'm gonna listen to it. I just want niggas to know I just, I'm not listening to everything all the time. I gotta get like you know what I mean. I gotta get comfortable with your music. I I'll be busy. I got shit to do. So no, every time you say, oh, I just dropped the album in your email. Listen, listen. You know what I mean. And then it's always it's always certain people like certain people I gotta be like yo why you ain't send me that like you be like one of them niggas I'll be like yo I mean because you don't be on it like that you don't be like trying to sweat a nigga not like that you be y'all niggas that they play it cool but them is the niggas who I'll be like why you ain't fucking tell me why you ain't send that shit to me? why you ain't shoot me the MP3 like you know I'm trying to play you and you know I'll do that shit like I, sometimes I want listen it was a time <laughs> I was like yo he was like oh. I don't get no love on the platform. I was like, yo, I was just waiting. You know what I mean? But when I got to the shit, when I got to the shit, it's like, yeah, we making sure we plug in the inside because not enough niggas is talking about it. We're going to make sure that they talk about it. And then I want niggas to see the reaction. I be liking when the artists see the reaction from my live audience. I be like, yo, man, I played your shit. Go see what they said. You know what I mean? I feel good about it. I'm not your, I'm not your pops. You know what I mean? I'm not your fucking cousin. But I feel a sense of pride in it. When I'm looking at the comment section, they're like, yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, my ears ain't broke. My ears good. I'm like, yeah, they understand. And my live chat, most educated hip-hop chat on YouTube. Like, them niggas know shit. Them niggas be knowing the history. They be knowing this producer did something way back in the day when he had a different name. You know what I mean? They be educating me on the shit. You know what I mean? So then when they say, when these niggas say, no, that's the truth. Because I'll put niggas shit up on my live and I'll be like, yo, smash a pass, nigga. I get niggas that'll be like, you got to pay my, you got to pay my, you know what? We're going to let them vote on the shit. Right. We're going to let them vote on it. You know what I mean? And sometimes niggas win. And sometimes niggas lose. I didn't watch it happen before. You know what I mean? But Zai don't do smash a pass. I just play the shit, but I watch the reaction from the live and they really fucks with you heavy. I mean, another one of my brothers that that they fuck with heavy. I don't think a lot of people talk about him. Mav, you know what I mean? Now, I'm not saying this because he a co-host on the show that I do. I'm saying like Mav is type nice. I think it's Breakfast at Sue's is one of his albums. Yeah, and I then listen, I gotta do my research. I gotta do my man, research. that boy nice. He nice. So it's like, dude, these are names I gotta keep on saying. This is the part that I love about the game is that I get to say to whoever about an artist that they may not know nothing about. 
That's the part of the game I love. The part of the game I hate is prima donna ass suckers who think because they did 3,500 views that they're too good. You're right. You are too good. And I'm too good. And that's why I don't fuck with most of these cats. And that's why I fuck with less and less rappers every fucking day. So if you see a rapper show up over here, they really kind of special at this point because I don't give a fuck. Oh, I just was like off of my own shit, man. My bad. My bad. No. But listen, it's like you, it's Conway says this shit all the time. He said, I really hate these rappers. We share the same sentiment, man. I mean, I ain't a rapper. I'm a messenger, bro. Yeah. You see? And I ain't even, I ain't even really on, on artist timing because I'm, I'm on messenger timing. Like, this shit got a purpose to it. You know what I'm saying? And there's people this that just heard what I said. It's, it's rappers that just heard what I said and they think, oh, this nigga, this, he feel a certain way. Ask anybody who I've been, who DMs have I been in in the last eight months trying to get an interview? It's only going to be two people that can even say I did. I'm just saying, it's only going to be two rappers that's going to say I did. That, listen, the last, and we'll talk about this later. The last interview I did before I did this odd shit was um, Black G's. Very controversial video. Wild situation. Um, and I haven't done nothing since then. Not because of that situation, just because I'm doing other shit. I've got another show I'm trying to get together. That ain't make it hot? Huh? That, that show ain't make it hot? It didn't exactly turn down the temperature. <laughs> you said it didn't exactly turn down the temperature. And nah, I feel you, Johnny, man. I, I didn't. I, I tried not to throw no kerosene on it, but your, the point is taken. People have to reflect. You know what I mean? People have to reflect. People have to think about the things that they have done. And the thing that is that happens is is that people who know, who've been watching, such as yourself, might say, but that's not Mike Powers. <laughs> that's not. That's He don't really be in that type of, you know what I mean? That's a, that's so this is, the, this is the point that I get. I get that you, you kind of, you're getting there, right? So the point is well taken. Um, we'll talk about why that interview did take place at a certain point. I'm gonna be ready to talk about it and everything that went with it. Uh, this ain't the time of the place, but yeah, we will we will talk about it. I have thought about it. I have reflected on it, and what I have to say about that might surprise a lot of people. One day we'll talk about it. But Zai, listen, it's been my pleasure. It won't be the last time. Obviously, you're gonna be back. You know what I mean? Um, so, it, if you have anything you want to add before we close this one down, go ahead, real quick. Hey, Amen. Oh. <clears throat> Just pay attention, you know. Stay aware the new album seven 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 is dropping. Most likely uh September. I'll give y'all a definite date soon. Um hopefully this week I should have a definite date for the people, man. I've been uh, a little procrastinating with that. Uh seven 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 on the way. Uh look out for new merchandise and all of that. You know, we love that he's our force ones for sale, you know what I'm saying? I put out some visuals soon, I put out some snippets. I mean, my son Big French wanted a pair, I got from my guy here. Um, Shout out to French. Yeah, shout out my son French, man. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, my shout out my boy Traumatic too, you know what I'm saying? He always wanna check it. This is for motion, appreciate if you might have me on this, on this platform. One more game. It's mutual. You already, you already know you always you always welcome around here on some real shit. Nigga, it's Za, it's the Bronx, it's Powers. What the fuck was poppin' is your boy Mike Powers? The, 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 the intro came.